All right, good peeps. Welcome back. Another edition of Daily Scone. Glad to be back, man. Very, very grateful uh, for everyone who listened to the last episode and reached out and said, hey, so glad to hear that uh, Daily Scone is back. As always, if you've got feedback, hit me with it. Uh, something I want to do a te- uh, address today is uh, something I got asked today, kind of tongue-in-cheek, and it's it's kind of the question of, is it possible to be overexposed? So, I, as you can probably tell, uh, I do a buttload of media. I I try to be to be to be everywhere. Uh, I have a daily radio show from three to six in the afternoon. I started my morning Facebook show, Morning Scone. I'm doing this podcast, Daily Scone. Uh, I write uh, for GridironNow.com. Uh, I'm on Twitter, I am on LinkedIn, I am on Facebook, I have a personal account and a Facebook page, I am on Instagram, I'm on Snapchat, I am I am everywhere. <laughs> that's that's my aim, is to be everywhere. So the question is, is, is it possible to, to be overexposed? And this came up today because uh, this morning I was guest hosting Off the Bench. So Jordy Collada, who hosts Off the Bench, uh, took a day off and he asked last week if I was available. So, uh, and mornings just because of our schedule aren't, aren't really that easy because my wife, Erica works. And so I normally have drew in the morning. So we had to get Erica's mom to come to our house for like six 45 because I was already out of the house and Erica had to get ready and go to work. And so her mom came over to watch too early, but it like it, it, it's worth it because like Jordy and T-Bob, have filled in for me in the past, like when I've been out and they pulled the double shift, and it's just, it's not an easy thing to do. So it's like, we all help each other out. Um, the other part of it is like, just a personal philosophy is, I always say yes. So this morning, I'm guest hosting with T-Bob, I'm on Off the Bench with T-Bob, and somebody posts in the huddle on our station's app that they heard me, <laughs> they heard me on Saturday talking about computers on 98.1 HD3. Well, the HD3 channel on 98.1 is our sister station, Talk 107.3. That's the HD signal. Well, there's a show, a weekend show, called Tech Gumbo. Uh, tech, T-E-C-H, like technology. And the host of the show asked me last week, I've known the guy a long time, asked me last week if I would be a guest on the show. And he wanted to talk to me about how I use technology in like preparing for my show and my, my daily life and want to talk about doing morning scone and then, you know, just kind of how radio has changed and all that, how technology's changed radio and all that stuff. So I was like, absolutely. So they record the show on a Friday around lunchtime. So la- this past Friday went in, recorded that show, and then it aired a couple times over the weekend. Well, uh, excuse me. The, um, so this poster in the huddle says, man, like, <laughs> are you, how many shows does this guy do? And my answer is easy. All of them. Every single one of them. I do my show. I will guest host shows on Wednesday and Friday of this week. I am guest hosting the Chuck Oliver show. Uh, if you don't know who Chuck Oliver is, he's based out of Atlanta. He hosts Chuck and Chernoff in, on Afternoon Drive on 680 on, in Atlanta. But also hosts the Chuck Oliver show, which airs from noon to 2 Eastern, 11 to 1 Central, which is a daily two-hour college football show, which is syndicated in the Southeast on Southern Sports Today in 47 markets. So I'm going to host that show on Wednesday and Friday. I would do Thursday as well, but I have a a lunchtime meeting on Thursday that I can't cancel. So I'm going to host a show in 47 markets on Wednesday, a college football show on Wednesday and Friday from 11 to 1 Central, continue prepping for my show for a couple more hours, then do my show from 3 to 6 Central. Look, the point is, like, the, the, the question is asked, like, is it possible to be overexposed? And in my opinion, no. In, in 2018, in the digital media age, there is so much competition for attention that you have got to constantly be feeding the monster with content. And if you're not, someone else is. If, if, if my listener goes to Twitter at 10.30 a.m. and I'm not there, 
Well, somebody else is. Like, somebody's populating their timeline. So even though I'm not on the air, something of mine is going to be in their face at that moment. If it's my morning scone, if it's a Gridiron Now link, if it's an interview I'm doing on a radio show in a different market, if it's my interaction with listeners, if it's, hey, here's what's coming up on the show today. If you aren't capturing someone else's attention, somebody else is. So it is so important to always be present. Like It is not sufficient in 2018, in the digital media age, to be a, a, you know, a radio host as I am and only do radio. To show up in people's consciousness at 3 o'clock Central, to leave their consciousness at 6 o'clock Central, and then to be gone until the next day at 3. If you do that, you are losing. The flip side of it is you could ask, okay, what about overexposure? Well, I'll put it to you this way. The average tweet populates a timeline for about average, about 16 minutes, somewhere in the 16 to 18 minute range. So theoretically, I could post a tweet, wait 20 minutes, post the same tweet again, and it would be an entirely different audience of people seeing it that did not see it the first time and would never have seen it unless if they go back to my timeline and are scrolling my feed to see what I was tweeting before. And, the, and you know how you use Twitter and how you use social, social media, and the overwhelming majority of you are never going to see that. I talk, I talk to this about my wife all the time, with my wife about this all the time. So like I do morning scone. I say, hey, babe, listen, I try to explain how the Facebook algorithm has changed. And organic reach, Facebook is going for what they call Facebook Zero, where they, they want to essentially eliminate organic reach. Like they're not, they're not going to populate people's timelines with clutter they want, and it, it's less that it's more that they want people like me to buy to boost a post or buy a Facebook ad, which I totally get. I mean that's their revenue stream, and I, I completely understand it. But I tell Erica all the time, I'm like, hey, look, the way things like Morning Scone get seen by more people is when people share it. Like that's how it's going to populate more feeds and get a, a greater reach and more views and more interactions. And more impressions and all that sort of stuff. So share it. And she says, well, look, I, you know, I don't want to do it because I don't want it to like bother the people. Like The reality is, we've all done this. You're on your phone. How you view Facebook and how you view Twitter, it's like your thumb is just scrolling fast. Like The overwhelming majority is going to zoom right past it, and most will never see it. But, but to increase the chances of it seen, you got to get shared. My, my point with that is like, even my wife has a problem thinking like, I don't want to bother people in their timeline. And I'm like, just think about your own habits. Like think about how, when you open up your phone and you're on Instagram or you're on Facebook, you're on Twitter, like how fast you're just scrolling and blowing through your feed. Like you're never going to think, oh my God, that, that guy tweets too much. That guy posts too much. I'm gonna, it's, it's a rarity that that happens. And if it does, then you unfollow. Or you, you know, you, you block them or whatever the case may be. You, 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 you unlike their page on Facebook. It's, it's a concern that some people have that's just not realistic. When you look at people that have, you know, millions of followers on Twitter or, and are on every single social platform that are flooding the, the internet with, with 10 times the content that I am. And they're not overexposed. There's no way that little old me in Baton Rouge could possibly be overexposed. It's all a fight for attention. So, with that being the case, I'll tell you this: like a couple other things that are just principles of mine. Like I will always say yes. If someone asks me to do an interview, I'll if it's if it is feasible for me, I will always say yes. I mentioned I did Tech Gumbo this weekend. I hosted for Jordy today. I'm hosting the Chuck Oliver Show on Wednesday and Friday. Uh, tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., I'm going to be on the Josh Innes Show in Houston as a guest. I'll get at, I'll do probably on average about 10 interviews a week on other radio stations, and I will just or, or podcasts or whatever the case may be. And I will always say yes. It's not like I'll only say yes to the big ones, like if Fine Bomb calls or something like that. I'll do his show. No, I, I will do anything. Like if you have a podcast and you have 10, 10 listeners, 100 listeners, and you ask me, and we can like allocate time appropriately, I'll say yes, I'll do it. I'll spend 10 minutes on the phone talking to somebody. We can just make it convenient for me as, as a guest, just like I would do with anybody who's a guest on my show. Like 
I, when I'm booking a guest, I'll say, hey, look, here's the, the time I have available. You let me know what's convenient for you, and I'll make it work on my schedule. Give them three or four times to say, hey, which, what works best for you? So it's like, if I could be in the car driving you know, and be on the phone for 10 minutes doing your interview on your podcast, I'll absolutely do that, like every single time. So like, I think that's important for a couple of reasons. Number one, just because it's like the right thing to do. Like people are always very generous with their time to come on my show. And so I feel like that's just putting out like good vibes into the, the universe to say, hey, look, this is sort of paying it forward for everyone that comes on my show. Like I'm reciprocating every time someone asks me to go on their show or their podcast or whatever the case may be. Um, yeah, you know, SEC Media Days. I, I, did, I did 50 interviews on radio where we're talking about LSU. My good friend Michael Cobble asked me if like I would go on his 6 o'clock uh, hit on the e- on the six o'clock news on WBRZ TV in Baton Rouge and do a funny bit where we handed out the Maury Awards. You know, it just means more. Well, absolutely. Like, I'm going to help Michael do that. But the flip side of it too is like, is selfishly, there's a benefit because it just like I was talking about before. It's all attention, and every every different platform or medium that you can remind people that you're there or funnel people toward toward your content. It's 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 all good. It's all positive. So I I just don't believe there's such a thing as being overexposed because there's so many options. And if somebody doesn't want to consume you, then they can just look elsewhere. They can X out of the box. They can scroll past you in their feed. They can change the channel on the radio dial. It's just, there's so many options that in this day and age, I think it's just, it's, it's impossible for someone like me or almost anyone to be overexposed in 2018. Um, so with that in mind, so like a couple of other things I can tell you that are coming that I'm really excited about. Of course, doing Morning Scone every morning on the Matt Moscone YouTube channel. I would highly recommend uh, if you don't watch it, uh, please do. It's, I, it actually, we originated as a Facebook Live around 7.20 Central Time. And when it's done, I'll upload it to YouTube. I then share it on, on, a, on all my social platforms. Now that is talking sports. We do a lot of Q&A with uh, your know, live interaction Q&A. So I would encourage you to listen to that. Um, of course, we do this podcast, and I, I love getting questions and comments and feedback from you, so uh, please share. Uh, and then I'll tell you two more things we're doing. Um, one is, of course, I write for Gridiron Now. Uh, and in many, in many uh, instances, honestly, that's just a vessel for me to promote what we do at ESPN Baton Rouge. So like, if we have a great interview... I'll take quotes from that interview, write a piece around that. They'll embed the audio link to our to our podcast page, and then it'll it'll publish. So like, I'll get I'll get paid from Gridiron now for doing that, and then it also drives traffic back to our website into the on demand page. So like, my on demand, which is sponsored by Breck Golf. Well, when now we're driving metrics for Breck Golf and more, more and more people are seeing the podcast and being exposed to the show that might not have otherwise been, and that's even outside of just Baton Rouge because that's the entire uh, Gridiron Now network and people that are familiar with that site that are going to see that you know, populated or published on the homepage of that website, which is an SEC website. So someone in Athens, Georgia, or Atlanta, Georgia, or Birmingham, Alabama may go to gridironnow.com thinking that, oh, I'm going to go see if I can find something for Alabama, but they go to the homepage and they say, boom, there's, you know, LSU Deputy AD agrees with Nick Saban's scheduling philosophy. They click it. Well, now all of a sudden they're reading an article based around quotes from an interview on my radio show that redirects you to our website. So again, it's like, it's all just dropping people like into that attention, into that funnel that all goes down to the same spot. So, um, but aside from Gridiron Now, uh, I was approached by the Action Network, of course, with legalized sports betting. There's such, there's just like such a land grab right now in that space. Uh, and the folks from the Action Network reached out to me and asked if I'd be interested in contributing content about LSU to their site for people who are interested in sports betting and learning more about the teams that they might bet on. And so naturally, I'm like, of course. So I'm going to be a contributor at the Action Network. And then also... This is one that I'm very excited. We're actually starting tomorrow, Tuesday, the uh, July 31st. Um, and so, actually, if you're listening to this, it, it may be Tuesday, so you may be listening to it as on the day we're going to record this. But uh, one of the most popular features on After Further Review is the Riot Radio Hour. So Ryan Terrio, former big leaguer, who is a good friend, um, he has come on my show every Friday for about five years now. 
and it's become a very popular staple. We've expanded it from like a segment to two segments to an hour, now to two hours on Friday. And we have great chemistry and great rapport, and I love the guy. He's one of my best friends, and we have a great time together, and people have really responded to it. Uh, And he's wanted to do more, and so... Like he's he's gotten a taste of, you know, doing a successful radio show and getting sponsored and making money doing that and like what the possibilities are to grow there and wants to do more. So uh, we talked about doing a podcast and a few years back, Ryan and I did did a few episodes of a podcast and we struggled with consistency. We struggled with finding what topics like what we wanted it to be and how often we wanted to publish it and where we were going to do it. And it, it, and so it fizzled, uh, quite honestly. And he and I have been talking about it again. And I got an idea from, from Gordy Rush, our boss, uh, at Guarantee, after he went to the Major League Baseball All-Star Game uh, this month in D.C. Uh, Gordy's part, part of the ESPN Radio affiliate board. Uh, so he went up to D.C. for these ESPN Radio affiliate meetings and as part of that weekend, he went to a live recording of the Baseball Tonight podcast. It was Buster Olney, it was Carl Ravage, and Tim Kirchin. And they recorded a podcast with a live audience. And it gave him the idea, like, hey, this is something we can replicate. So he came to me and said, would you be interested in doing this? So what Terrio and I are going to do is every Tuesday at noon... He and I are going to record a podcast, and we'll 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 air it on on our on the ESPN Facebook Live page, and we're going to find a spot. Now tomorrow, when we do the first episode, we're going to do it at Traction. But our our goal is ultimately to find a spot in Baton Rouge where we can go every Tuesday at noon, encourage people to come out, maybe like a lunch spot, encourage people to come out, meet Terrio, watch us, listen to us record the podcast. Hopefully, you know, find it engaging or entertaining or whatever while we record the podcast and we'll we'll publish it and that's a way obviously to to bring some attention to a business partner, you know, restaurant around lunch hour to bring our audience out to meet us. We can get a live audience on our social media uh in person and then we'll publish the podcast and so we'll get that residual benefit from people who just want to go back and listen to it later. So and I I know that like some would say well aren't you competing with your station's midday show? And so I know people have asked me that about morning school. I'm like, aren't you competing with Jordan and T-Bob? And the answer is no. No, I'm not. It's like I'm not I'm not stealing market share, first and foremost. Uh, secondly, you're talking about a, a, a broader audience on social media that will extend outside of the terrestrial signal. More so, you're filling a need that if if you don't do it, Somebody else very well could. And as I've talked about so many times, like if your content is good, and especially in the digital age, like people are going to find it. So even if, like when I record Morning Scone and when we finish, there might have been like a couple hundred views. By the end of the day, when I go back and look, you're in the 12 to 1500 views. So what that tells me is the way people are consuming that is not like watching it live as I'm doing it. Some are. But as the day goes along, outside of that that segment when I'm I'm recording it, people are are finding it on their Facebook page. Maybe they'll watch it in their lunch hour. They'll watch it when they have a break at work. They'll watch it on their ride home. They'll watch it when they get home. What, like whatever the case may be, but the numbers build throughout the day. So it's not like I'm competing with another morning show. It's just giving people another option to consume concept a uh, content in a different format in a different day part, however they want to consume it. And so the same is going to be true with the Riot Podcast when we do that on Tuesdays at noon. So here's hoping that uh, if if you listen or, or you know, follow us on, on the, the Facebook page to watch it live, uh, if you can come out whenever we have a place to watch it uh, and, and we have a home to record it, you'll come out and watch us do it live or uh, just you'll catch the podcast on any platform. It, it, it'll publish at... Uh, 1045ESPN.com on the, the 1045 app. It'll be under the Riot Podcast tab, and, and it'll be right there for, for you to consume. So we're excited about it. We're, I plan to be really interactive. I do a lot of Q&A with, uh, with the audience and very interactive with the audience, much like uh, the Ask Ryan segment is at the end of the Riot Radio Hour, if you've ever listened to that. So 
Uh, that's that's our ambition. So we're uh, you know, that's at least our idea as we push off from the dock. And you know, I just think one of the really important things though is being versatile and you know being willing to adapt and change as is necessary. So you know, if we find that the show is evolving in a certain way, we'll certainly go that way as well. But in any event, uh, I, hopefully you'll you'll find it. You'll continue consuming the content. I'm thrilled that you found this as well. Uh, as always, I love feedback. So please, 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 please. Uh, hit me up on Twitter, at Matt Moscona, on Instagram, on Snapchat, on Facebook. Uh, on my Facebook page is Matt, Matt Moscona AFR. Uh, you can email me, mattmoscona at gmail.com, M-A-T-T-M-O-S-C-O-N-A, mattmoscona at gmail.com. If there's something that you'd like for me to discuss, this is not an idle uh, mention. I legit mean this. Um, I can turn your question into a topic for Daily Scone. So if there's something about radio or about what I do or about media or about anything you've ever been interested in or curious about, fire off a question on on, on social media or email me and I'd, I'd love to get back to you. Or if there's someone you'd like for me to interview on this about their career in media, that's something else I'd like to do more of. We had a great Q&A, we had two episodes with Jordi Collada about how he puts together a morning show and about his proficiency in booking guests because as I've said, Jordi's just the best I've ever been around at doing that. Uh, so go back and listen to that if uh, if you missed that episode. But uh, anyway, if there's something you want me to he- you want to hear, you want me to discuss, fire away, mattmascona at gmail.com. Uh, in the meantime, have a great one, and uh, until next time, it's Daily Scone.